Welcome to Conversations with Jen and Mel. This show is about real life with real people, having real conversations from better health to mental health and more. Let's check out the conversation right now with your host, Jen and Mel. Welcome. Today's topic is learning to love yourself. So I want to start off by talking about being beautifully flawed. Um, I think that most of us have had some self-esteem issues at some one point or another in our life. Um, and so for me, a lot of it revolved around my weight. Um, from being a heavy kid, I'm still a heavy adult, but I'm okay with it now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Beautifully flawed. So <clears throat> I had to learn to see myself through God's eyes. And I reflected constantly on the scriptures about being made in his image. <laughs> and when I thought about that, it made me look at myself in a positive light. Um, it made me appreciate all of my flaws, the, the moles on my face that I didn't like, the hair that do its own thing, even when you put a lot of gel on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, everything, all of it. Um, I am made in the image of God, and He thought about me. Wow, <laughs> He numbered the hairs on my head. Thought about me. Yes, that's amazing. Even the one I washed down the straight, the the sink, is the one that fell off in the shower. They just, he, they had a number. Yes. Uh, when you think about that. That he knew me before he created the world? Yeah. That's awesome. So I have to I have to change my outlook about myself based on what the word says that I am, not what the TV or the magazines or our family or people that I liked that didn't like me, what they thought doesn't matter. Because God said. Wow. That you were fearfully wonderfully made. You were made in his image and likeness. Wow. So, learning to love myself. That has been a journey that came with so many battle wounds, and so many conversations with myself. Because at the end of the day, the one thing that I'll have with me is the me that God created. Now, we talked about an episode of removing the layers. And so when when the layers are removed and all those things are shared, you end up in a vulnerable state, and it's just you, naked. And it was the nakedness that I was able to, it was in that nakedness that I talked about before in that state. You know, I had gone through a divorce and and I was so blessed to move down to this great condo in the midst of downtown. And I was on the seventh floor and I walked around that condo naked. And uh, I, I spent so much time by myself and it was full of mirrors. And every turn I was confronted with me and I wasn't on the phone, I turned the phone off and I was in silence. So every moment of the day I spent confronting me and having conversations with me. And it was when I tuned out the world and I was able to take a look at me that I'll begin to embrace the woman that I saw looking back at me. And I was able to look at every scar, every wound, you know, the saline, the stretch marks that I really don't really have because my skin is real pale, but the dog on saline. But wait a minute. But everything about me, I was able to take a 
an up close and personal look at. And I began to love it. I began to love every flaw. Oof. Hold on. Because I had to pour into myself the love that had not been poured into me, that I had poured into everyone else. So when I stripped myself of all the roles, and God had stripped me of all the roles, it was in that quiet time that I was able to heal and to love myself. And it began when we paying attention to myself. Mm -hmm. I had to drown out the noise that had so my here. attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And pay attention to me. The me. And... It wasn't always with the with the blonde hair you see I'm wearing and with the makeup on. It was sometimes just naked in my 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 half curly, half straight, frizzy hair back in a ponytail and you know, and me walking around with my specs on and whatever I saw looking back at me in the mirror and understanding that I loved her because of what she endured and somebody needed to. Oof! <laughs> that she was deserving of love. When I, I saw a woman that was deserving of love. So when you all look in the mirror, what do you all see? After all that you all have been through, so learning to love myself, I think it was a conscious choice to love myself. It was a conscious choice to give me that that I poured into everyone else in a time of self-reflection. So when you all look in the mirror, don't you all see a woman that's been through enough that is deserving of love? And shouldn't that love start with the person who spends the most time with her? Shouldn't that that love come from you first? And stop waiting on someone else to give you what you should give yourself. That's not their responsibility. Nor is it their responsibility to make you happy. Uh -huh. So, uh, so learning to love myself. It started with, it started from that place of brokenness when there was no more me left. And I made a conscious choice to pour love into me. Now, what did that look like? It looked like me giving myself permission continuously to be me. And that I was enough. Oh, hold on. Now, every time I saw someone with that t-shirt on, it was almost an epiphany or that saying, I am enough. No, for a minute, it had to resonate with me. Like I had to rehearse that and had to recant it. And I am enough. Like I'm not in competition with my sister. I'm not in competition with my brother. I'm not in competition with another. I am enough. I am enough. As I am, it doesn't matter who's for me. It doesn't matter who's against me. It doesn't matter who approves of me. God approves. I am enough. I hate thought enough of you to die on the cross. He did. For you. Wait a minute. And he knew me. And he knew me. And he knew, he knew the me that I hid from you. How about that? Yes. He knew the me that just lives inside my head. <laughs> <laughs> that we don't share with the people. That had not been shared before I understood that he was watching my thoughts. Yes. Because, ooh, if thoughts could kill. <laughs> <laughs> this is another topic. <laughs> if thoughts could kill, ooh. Lynch mob, you hear me? Oh my goodness. Yes, finding self-love. <laughs> Learning 
to love yourself. And so what do you think that, what else looks like? Oh, what else does self-love look like? Well, we talked about setting boundaries, being able to say no, but that goes back to knowing who you are and what you're saying no to, or what are you saying yes to? Is it because you want to or because it's expected of you or you think that this is the right thing to do? But then it doesn't feel right in your spirit Wow. And you regret that you said yes later on or after you did it. It looks like having courage to say no, because saying it. no is hard. That That's it right there. That is it. That is it. Self-love also look for me, the courage to say no. And not feel bad about it. <laughs> And not feel bad about it in spite of the relationship. Yes. In spite of the relationship. I don't care. No is no. You know, and I don't care how much you try to urge me, try to make me, try to... If my no is no, my no is no. Yes. And I don't really care who you are. I'm like, no is no. The old folks used to call it putting your foot down. <laughs> And Which Melanie told me earlier that I'm old, so <laughs> if you didn't know, now you know. Because <laughs> she was acting like this was a new rub I thought like, you know this. My... Anyway. <laughs> I had never fully examined it, you know. I just... She I... had an epiphany today. Uh, like... She said, you always been like this? You always yes. Oh, gee. Now, yes. I've always been... Uh, the nurturing, like my mother used to call my friends, my kids. I always just wanted to make sure everybody was okay. Aww. But I ain't never been that. Yeah, I was. I got younger as I got older. <laughs> oh, I was so old. I was so old. I always been old. My friends are old. My husband is old. I like being around old people. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I got old too quick. Yeah. But I'm back, y'all. Okay, stop. We're in the middle of a show. We got distracted. We got distracted. distracted. Self-love. So <laughs> but see, I accept these things about myself. So I was surprised that, I don't know, that she had a revelation. Because I knew this all the time. Go ahead, self-love. So Setting boundaries, saying no. I think, um, so I, I remember being in church and one of the elders in church, she came up to me, she said to me, you are intimidating. And she said, part of me wanted to be offended by you. She said, but God was drawing me to you. She said, why well, so many people are concerned about being what other people think they should be. You're so free to be yourself. And so what she saw was not me loving myself. She saw me working on loving myself. She saw me working at self-acceptance. And so working at self-acceptance looks like anything we practice, we become. So continually, I gave myself permission to be me. And in that moment and in that season, it was at whatever I was, uh -huh. wherever I am. Because one thing that I identify with, God can use me in any season. And that there's a people that we are to touch in every place of our existence. That even though she saw that from her place of brokenness, she didn't understand that I was still in my, my own space, yet broken, but working aggressively, you know, at becoming whole, mm -hmm. actively at becoming whole. And so giving myself permission continually to be me because I'm quirky, you know, I'm weird and I'm wise.
And sometimes I'm a whole oxymoron. Like it's it's almost baffling, honestly, because um, it's so much that I'm completely aloof to, but then there's so much that I'm a genius to. Like I'm a creative genius. Like I always say, God gives me business ideas like he gives artists portraits, you know? But that's the creativity part of me. That's the creative part of me from, from shows to businesses to, I'm creative like that. That's who I am. But you ask me something real simple and I'm looking at you cockeyed because something that I probably should know because it's not my experience, I'm completely aloof to and There you go. I get You've made an important part point though. Yeah. How can you know it if it's not your experience? You've never experienced it. And it's not your experience. And so I'm okay and I identify when it's not my experience. And so I don't feel like there's a wrong question anymore. Uh. You know? Like I, I have enough letters and enough initials behind my name, enough security in who I am to say, I don't know. I don't know. You know? Say, so I, I don't know. And so with me, self-love is... I don't even care where you think I should be. If I'm not there, then I accept that I'm not there. Not and there. if it's something you need to teach me, then I'm willing to learn. There you go. You know? Yeah. Put me in the game, coach. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Okay. Another part of <laughs> learning to love yourself is going to be your self-care. Here we go again. You brought it up. So I learned a week or two ago. I went to a conference. It wasn't a conference. It was a, it was, I don't know. It was a meeting, but they had a, a speaker. Anyway. I did not know it was so many different aspects of self-care. When I thought of self-care, for the most part, I think about sleep. <laughs> sleep or going to get your nails done, maybe a massage, something like that. There's like 14 different types of things to consider when you're looking at self-care. Financial self-care, Spiritual self-care. No, it's not. It's not about getting more jobs. It is about knowing what you need to feel secure. That sounds like more jobs. <laughs> we don't have time for any more jobs. Melanie has officially maxed my capacity out. There's no more time for that. Yeah, I think she's the goal is to get more money, not more jobs. I think she could be stretched a little bit. I cannot. (laughs) Boundaries (laughs) saying no. She just said no. (laughs) She said it live, (laughs) y'all. She said it live. Don't trust it. Don't trust it. If it comes with dollars, don't trust it. Did you know there was a political self care? Did you know that? Oh, I never heard of that before. Let me tell you, today I saw Big Gretch on, I know we're rambling, but wait a minute. I saw Big Gretch on television, and when I saw her, I, I was elated. Oh. So then it made my heart glad. Like, no. when I saw her, I didn't know I liked her so much. <laughs> Until I saw her today, and, and it was... Okay, what, you, what did you like? Her presence. It was something, it was a strength and a warmth in her presence. And then I saw her, and it, it warmed my heart. Hmm. So today I'm wearing pink in honor of Big Red. She had on pink today. Amen. Because okay. I think it was Breast Cancer Awareness Day a few days ago or last week or something. Okay. But I don't know. Maybe that's not why she had it on. Okay. Maybe she likes pink. So you said so what some other forms of self-care were. Oh, now you want to ask me. You said political. Uh, and I was talking about Big Gretch. Mm-hmm. What else? Spiritual. Spiritual. Relationships, I think. There was just a lot. There was like 14 different categories. Had I realized we were talking so much about self-care today, I might have brought it with me so we could discuss it, but I don't have it. Yeah. Sleep. Sleep. (laughs) (laughs) 
to realize Melanie Hustler and sleep about five times. <laughs> sleep deprived. is deprived. <laughs> she needs more sleep. Deprived. Yes, but self care is important. So, what does your self care normally look like? Um, my self care looks like my shutting down routine at the end of the night. It looks like my time with my family. Um, both my immediate family and my extended family. That's important to me. Um, I think I'm still working on financial self-care. <laughs> mm-hmm. Definitely spiritual self-care. What else? Sleep. I I. That's part of it. My vacations are my self-care. Yeah. So, learning to love myself. Learning how to celebrate me was a big deal. Mm learning how to celebrate me and saying that the move that I made was a good move, that it wasn't simply that that was required of me, you know, because I came from a family where we understood that we were going to college and we were going to get degrees and a high school diploma was the minimum of what you were going to do. And yes, you were going to college. And and it, it was just, I understood that. And working is something that you were going to do. And from the time I was a kid, I understood that I would be an entrepreneur. And it just seems like everything in my life that I had accomplished was what was required of me. Mm-hmm. And even, even now, I have to literally stop and focus and smell the roses because I'm so busy building in in the process of becoming that sometimes I don't take time to say well done. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like um, sometimes I get caught in the race of, of building versus stopping to examine it and say, okay, you did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, it's always more and I can't even say that it has it's greed because it's not always financial because some of it is service mm-hmm. so it's just I feel like I'm always on in the process of becoming but in the process of becoming and getting to the place, arriving at the place that God has called me to, I need to stop and smell the roses. I need to stop and say, job well done. You know, I need to celebrate the bachelor's degree and the master's degree and even the few courses of the doctor. You know what I'm saying? I, I need to celebrate me at every facet of who I am and not take every accomplishment for granted. Right. And and I, I think that um, some of it is self-imposed, you know? Uh, I think a lot of it, much of it is self-imposed. Not that anyone else is expecting that of me, but I'm expecting that of myself. Uh-huh. And so maybe my standards, yes, they are high and I should aim high, but on the way to climbing, stop and say, okay, you know, well done. Yeah. Actually, that sounds like a good idea even now. Well done, Melanie. It sounds like we're just saying, well done. Self-love looks like. And so when I when I hear it, mm-hmm. that that's what self-love looks like, that's kind of like that thing where I'm talking about that self-care. 
where there definitely needs to be room for some improvement. But it's a balance. It is. It is. You can appreciate both. You can do both. I can. Keep working. Keep improving. Keep learning. And be grateful for what you have. Yeah. What you have done. Be grateful for where you are. Yes. On your journey. And you know, sometimes we think about vision and we think about God, you know, so vision, a viable forecast of the future. And sometimes we're so busy seeing ourselves as to where we need to arrive in our destination that we forget to take part of the journey. Uh-huh. And so even the art of being present, I think a lot of times it's because I've always been so focused on the destination that I forget to tiptoe through the tulips. And I'm the opposite. I'm all about the journey. Yeah. I'm only about taking notes in the journey, but I'm on my way to running, like do's and don'ts. I'm picking up, putting down, picking up, putting down. Okay, got this, got this lesson. You know, take that off, take that off, keep going. What did I learn? And I'm so busy that I'm, I'm taking notes, but I'm not finding, I'm not finding so much pleasure in it all the time. Mm. Yeah, See, I, that's my I like the tonight. journey. What what's going on? Why am I in this place? What do I need to learn from this experience? Yeah, I'm not so much running to get to the place because I don't think there is one. Yeah, I'm running. <laughs> I'm running. I'm always I'm running. Okay, I'm always running. But I think that's my epiphany tonight. But maybe that's why God put me in your life. Uh, just stop it. Go on, run me on my vacation. Go on my vacation. I'm going to slow you down. Slow me down. Oh, yes, because I love a vacation. Hold on. This is... Listen. Don't mess with me, because I'll be on book one tonight. That's it. Listen. Where we going? Uh, the slow now thing. <laughs> I think what has really just happened is Jen just hit hyper speed. <laughs> I need a third party to intervene to slow us down at this point. <laughs> oh, no, I'm going to slow her down. Because <laughs> she thinks she's going to keep adding more and more and more. One thing at a time. One. Two things at a time. Three things at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Three. Three things at a time. Three things at a time. Yes. Much prayer, <laughs> much power. <laughs> little prayer, little power. So self-love, you all. You see, we're still on this journey together. We're on a journey. We're on a journey. It's called life. And I'm sure you all are watching us and joining us on this journey called life and this journey of self-love. Until next time, we're out. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Conversations with Jen and Mel. Please join us every Monday at 8 p.m. for new episodes on Facebook, YouTube, Rick.TV, and the Rick TV app by way of Apple TV, Fire TV, and Roku. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Join us again next time on Conversations with Jen and Mel.